Hello and welcome to New Junction. Now, it's finally good to be back in the loft as you've had a, uh, a couple of weeks of uh, Warley based videos. But um, I suppose one big piece of news for me that's happened since uh, Warley or during Warley is uh, I had a new addition arrive, which was the Class 37 by Backman, the Euro Phoenix. Now, it's a very, very long awaited model, this is. I think I've had this on uh, pre order for about two years now. But um, let's hope it's worth it. I'm going to go and uh, get my light box out now and bring you a closer look and um, we'll see if it was worth the wait. So join me in a second and I'll get this unboxed. So here we are, Batman's long-awaited Class 37 Europhoenix with DCC sound. So as you can see, it comes in the fairly standard uh, blue box by uh, Batman, um, but that's not what we're here for. Let's get it open. All fairly standard once the outer sleeve has gone. Um, it comes in the traditional plastic ice cube. Um, so uh, let's get keep digging. Another layer gone, and it reveals uh, a nice accessory pack which comes with the usual sort of snow plows, etc. Um, you get a, a blanking chip in there, um, and then all the uh, pipes and hoses and couplings, etc. Um, I rarely fit those, I tend to leave them where they are in the box, mainly because uh, with my um, Chell Taser layout, I don't tend, they're not still enough for me to see them, so I don't tend to, uh, to warrant the opening the bags, but it's, it's a nice touch. Um, and I know some people do like them. Obviously then you have your uh, instructions with the uh, DCC sounds, uh, for the DCC sounds. There are a few different functions on this loco which I've never seen before, but we'll go into that in uh, more detail in a moment. Um, and then of course you have your uh, traditional instructions, removing the body, uh, lubrication, etc, etc. So here we are out the box. Now as you can tell, a very striking loco. Delivery is uh, rather impressive, um, and it's one I've been meaning to add to the fleet for some time. As I did mention before, I have had this on uh, um, order for probably about two years now. Um, that being said, now it's here. Um, it is a stunning loco. Um, the livery is uh, almost uh, faultless, I'd say. It's a very nice, striking livery. Um, no problems with it whatsoever. I'm very happy with it, um, and it fits my layout to a T. One thing that is noticeable um, it does come with couplings pre-attached uh, out of the box. Um, this isn't, I suppose, a problem, but um, I suppose they're easy enough to take off. They're just your typical NEM uh, couplings. Um, sometimes you only have one on, sometimes you have both, or sometimes none. But uh, easily removed, should you wish it. One feature as we look close up, in terms of the detail, there is a driver in one end, uh, if I can focus in on him. There we go, you can just about see. And it does have cab lights, um, so you can see a very nicely detailed uh, loco. You can't open the doors. Um, I've never needed that feature myself, but uh, uh, some people might like that. But they're uh, fixed solid. But uh, no, in terms of uh, detail, all you'd uh, it's all there. You'd expect it at this price point. Um, it's an absolutely solid loco. Now, in terms of uh, a model. Um, Batman obviously have done the uh, Class 37 before, um, which was has always been a very good model, um, and this one um, is absolutely fine. Um, it does come with the uh, sprung buffers, which is uh, the seal of approval, but um, no, it's a very nice model indeed. Now, the real thing I'm uh, look, most looking forward to seeing, there's a few new features with this model. Um, obviously, it's a sound-fitted um, loco, but there are a few features which are automated, um, so it'll be very interesting to see how that plays out because I've personally never experienced that before. So um, we'll get it on the uh, on the layout and uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, at this point, I'm rather excited. So what I'm going to do, I've got a microphone attached to myself and the loco, believe it or not. Um, so what I'm going to attempt to do is uh, run you through some of its sounds um, while it's on the camera and hopefully we get pickup from both. 
So the first things first, I'm going to start it up for you. And there we go. Obviously, uh, like most locos, it's uh, got all its lights, etc. So I'll turn those on. You might not be able to see them quite well uh, if they want to turn on. There we go. Make it face the right way. And we'll now depart with a whistle. So one of the new features we have is called coasting. Now, in effect, this is whatever speed you have your loco at, it'll drop the revs or the engine sounds down to idle as it coasts around without the actual loco slowing down any. Um, so what I'm gonna try and do now is try and capture this on camera. It might be a bit jerky, but uh, hopefully you'll get the idea. So the first things first, I'm gonna turn the, uh, the engine on. It's probably in the uh, 11 o'clock position. See if the camera will track it. There we go. I'm going to turn the coasting feature on. And as you can hear, the sounds have idled down, but the actual loco itself hasn't changed speeds at all. And that's just going to go merrily round and uh, plod on as it were. That's quite a neat feature. So another quite cool feature is one called Drive Hold. This is controlled by uh, Function 5. Um, and in effect, um, you set the speed of the loco as normal by turning your controller. Um, and then once uh, Function 5 is enabled, uh, in effect you lose control of the loco, but you only control the volume of the, the sound of the engine, as it were, the uh, revs. Um, so in theory, you can rev it up and down all you want but the speed of the loco won't change. Now, <clears throat> at first I thought it was quite a pointless thing. It could be, I suppose, potentially um, um, an issue because you've lost control of your loco, um, but I suppose you do have your emergency uh, stop buttons. Um, however, um, there are times where I'm, I mean, when I'm playing trains that uh, I just want the engine to rev up um, and I can't control it without actually speeding the train up. So if you've got a, a long train behind or one that's particularly finicky, um, you don't really want to do that. Um, but so this is quite a cool feature and i'm going to hopefully try and demonstrate it for you now um, we'll, we'll see if this works or not what i'll do is i'll set it off going i don't know why that happened so here we are i'm going to set it off reasonably slowly and now i'm going to enable function five so now in effect i should yeah i have I have lost control of this engine. So what I'm gonna quickly do, because uh, I'm not an expert with this camera by any means, as you can see. What my phone is trying to do is trying to track this engine, just so it follows it. There we go. So now as it goes past, <clears throat> as you can see, it's just idling now as it goes past really slowly. What I'm gonna do is turn my controller up and it should change the, uh, the engine sounds, um, but without changing the speed of the loco. So here goes. And just like that, you have full control of the, uh, the sound. So I'm gonna... Uh, re-engage control of the loco so I'll turn function 5 off and bring the uh, the engine to a halt and uh, <clears throat> it's as simple as that
Another unique feature to this Loco is called the uncoupling cycle. Now this is feature 14 on the uh, functions list um, and in effect what it does um, is it enables the automatic uncoupling of tension locks and knuckle couplings. So in effect using um, either magnets or um, uh, an uncoupling ramp for example you can press number 14 and the Loco will, uh, as you'll see in a minute, go backwards slightly before pulling away. This should uh, uncouple a Loco um, which could be quite a useful feature really. So if I enable function 14 now and doing nothing else, let's have a look. You see on its own it goes backwards slightly and then pulls forward. Now in theory if there was a magnet underneath the track or an uncoupling ramp um, that would have uh, detached from the train behind. Um, I don't have any of those so it's a bit useless to me but um, um, having had a play on certain layouts which do have them, such as CSS, CSX Rensville, um, the uh, open day I attended earlier in the year. Um, it's actually a fantastic feature um, and one I hope is um, more uh, widely adopted by new locos because uh, I think that's a very um, good feature to have on layout and one I'll be definitely adapting very soon. Now in terms of um, my overall review of this loco. Uh, to buy one, the RRP is £250 or there or thereabouts. Um, realistically, you'll see them on the internet for about £212. Um, I got mine for slightly less um, from my local uh, shop. Um, so, is that good value really? Um, in terms of customer experience, uh, from my model shop, can't fault them, they got it in on time, etc. But from the uh, manufacturer Batman themselves, they did provide you with a bit of a weight. So in a perfect world, um, I suppose the customer experience is a bit let down because of such a weight. They probably shouldn't announce things so soon. Um, as soon as they have a, a thought about a loco, they shouldn't announce them um, unless they've even got an inkling that it's coming. And if, it, if they did have an inkling it's coming and they still announced it and there's still a massive delay, then obviously there's something, uh, something wrong there and it doesn't help customer experience. So at £212, is it worth it? Now we all know that prices have to go up and we all know, uh, or we should all know, that Backman, of all the manufacturers and all their bashing they get, are probably the best at supporting the local model shop um, in terms of margin protection. They don't tend to uh, use box sellers which can often do shops out of business etc. Um, that being said, £200, 200 pounds is a lot of money for a single loco, especially when uh, older versions such as uh, my Colas Class 37, which we'll all have seen. I'll have that whiz pass now. This fella, you can pick that up right now, brand spanking for £90. That's not DCC fitted, of course, um, and that's with no sound. However, my one is fitted with a, uh, a sound chip from Hornby, one of the TTS sound chips, and it was also weathered um, out of house, I should say, and it still costs less than the Euro Phoenix. So, is it worth it? Well, I think it's a solid price and it has to be justified for anyone to want to purchase one. Um, looking online etc, I don't think people are struggling to uh, make room for them. They're very popular engines, but uh, I think if it was its full RRP at £250, I think we'd all struggle. So there we are, another addition to the New Junction fleet. Um, for all its negatives um, in terms of costings and time delays it is a fantastically satisfying loco it runs really smoothly as you'd imagine uh, some of the features can potentially be very useful to some modelers um, and I love it the sound is um, absolutely fine um, you could probably change the speaker up but then it's it's better than the uh, Hornby TTS um, and I think if you added a, a mega bass speaker to it I think you'd be uh, you'd be laughing and it's a solid solid member of, of the fleet so what I'm gonna do now start it up get it hitched to its train and uh, get playing with it and I'll leave you with some uh, running shots. Thank you as ever for tuning in, um, it's nice to be back in the loft again and uh, there'll be more updates coming very soon. Take care guys, bye.